Parallelograms. Parallelograms. There are so many quadrilaterals in the math world. Are you also confused about it? I tried to learn it and I want to share it with you. So let's go see it. Oh, well, let's look at quadrilaterals now. So what are quadrilaterals? Any figure with four sides and four angles is called a quadrilateral. Any figure with the total sum of 360 degrees. For example, all four angles, if all four angles are 90 degrees, it would be a quadrilateral. And all lines should be straight and not curved. The lines can be tilted like this, but it should not be curved. Next, families of quadrilaterals. There are three families of quadrilaterals. Number one, parallelogram. Number two, trapezium or trapezoid. And number three, kite. These are how they look like. So let's look at the first family, which is parallelogram there are three members in the family of parallelogram number one is rectangle number two is rhombus and number three is a square and if you look at the rhombus it is similar to the diamond next is the trapezoid or trapezium family which has an isosceles trapezoid which means that two of its angle are angles are equal and a right trapezoid which has two angles which are 90 degrees next are next is kite which has a right kite the same two angles have 90 degrees. Now let's look at the properties of a parallelogram and a trapezoid. So number one, sum of all angles. For example, angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus D is equal to 360 degrees. Same goes for the trapezoid. Number two is number of parallel lines so in a parallelogram line ab is parallel to line cd and line ac is parallel to line bd that's why there are two pairs of parallel lines okay. well in the trapezoid trapezoid line AB is parallel to line DC, but AD and BC cannot be parallel because they will meet at a point. That's why in a parallel, I mean in a trapezoid, there is only one pair of parallel lines. So the third property is opposite sides are the same in length. For example, in the parallelogram, line AB is 5 cm, then line BC will also be 5 cm because they are opposite. Line, if line AB is 3 cm, line BC will also be 3 cm. But for the trapezoid, all lines will be different. For example, if AB is 5 cm, then DC can be 7 or 8. So that means that this property is true for the parallelogram and false for the trapezoid. So the next property is opposite angles are the same. Which means in the parallelogram, angle A is Par, uh, equal to angle C and angle B is equal to angle D. For example, if A is 50 degrees, 
then C will also be 50. If B, then obviously B will be 130 degrees and D will also be 130 degrees because as property 1, sum of all angles should be 360 degrees. So that's why this property is true for the parallelogram. And while for the trapezoid, all angles are different. Like A can be, if A is 50, then C is not 50. It can be 80, 100 or something. That's why this property is false for the trapezoid. So the fifth one is the sum of every consecutive angle is one equal to 180 degrees, which is also supplementary. For example, in this parallelogram, angle A and B are, are consecutive and they are also supplementary because angle A is obtuse and angle B is acute. That's why this property is true for the parallelogram. But for the trapezoid, you can see that A and B are both obtuse. And if they are both obtuse, they cannot be 180 degrees. That's why this property is false for the trapezoid. So the last one is the diagonals bisect each other. So in the parallelogram, AD are diagonals and BC are diagonals. And E is where they meet. So you can see that EC is the same as BE. And AE is the same as ED. So that's why this property is true for the parallelogram. But as you can see, AE is very smaller than EC. And BE is also smaller than ED. That's why this property is also false for the trapezoid. Thank you guys. That's all I had for today. I hope you have learned something and have understood these properties. Uh, we will come with more videos of shapes and their properties. Keep watching and...